<laughs> How's it going? Anthony Ferraro here at Crate Sci-Fi. Uh, today, um, <laughs> we're going to build another blaster. <laughs> there is no zero shortage of blaster mods on my channel. I can't help myself. I am working on a new series, Zenith Run. So far, I got a few videos on the channel leading up to that show. I'm, I'm, I'm editing right now. I'll probably do an editing video on that. Um, I have no business making a blaster mod, but, but, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> I was in the uh, discount pharmacy the other day, you know, had to get some soap and some shampoo. And there's always that seasonal aisle. And I have bins, no shortage of squirt guns to be modded into blasters if I need them for a project. But I was walking by and then I see 50% off. And I'm like, well, let me just take a look. And I was like, uh. and then, for four dollars oh my gosh look at that thing <laughs> i was like ah all right so we're gonna do a mod of this squirt gun and why i couldn't help myself was a few things um all the squirt guns i have they kind of have like a very similar shape they probably make you know tens of thousands of them in china and they probably you know every year roll them out but this was very unique so I'm going to lose this. I'm going to use some styrene plastic and give it a nice profile. But what really sold me was this sort of wispy shape with this feature here. So it's a very interesting looking shape. And it has this, I guess the, the fun part for somebody who's using this is, you know, you can squirt around the corner or whatever but if i remove this and it has this cool like prong right so i just couldn't resist and then also too i, I really want to make this uh nice um well I always want to make it nice <laughs> but usually like for this i would just put a piece of foam but i want to use styrene um uh, i want to work on some paint techniques i've i've noticed a few things that i want to that I've done sort of happy accidents, but now I want to really uh, incorporate them on purpose. Um, so if I do a really clean, glossy black, uh, the things that I keep black, I can do the Core Geek uh, graphite finish. And then I noticed um, when I was anodizing things, um, that you know at first i masked the black and then i did a second coat and i noticed that if i have this silver and i anodize it the anodized spray paint over the black is kind of cool right it's like it still stays black but in the light you get the anodized color and then on top of that i noticed when i was doing the graphite treatment last time that same thing where you know i was doing it over the black and i got that graphite look that i wanted but when i graphited over my color i didn't lose the color so i want to do um a, a high gloss black finish anodize um a couple pieces maybe red or blue not sure yet then um anodize over the black and then graphite over the whole thing really just so the black will pop but um i think overall it'll give it a really cool look and i think you know with that prong and just kind of this interesting shape and then get rid of the squirt gun bubble right so <laughs> A long intro, but <laughs> I needed to justify for you and myself <laughs> another blaster mod while we're supposed to be working on the new film. <laughs> so let's get to work, get this done so I can get back to working on my new show. And away we go. Another squirt gun. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I do is liberate this from the packaging, stare at it, and think, oh boy, here we go again. But I love it. All right, so first thing I do is get rid of all the extraneous parts. Um, this little pump thing, I've left those on before, but all these things tend to be cues, so I, I like to get rid of anything that's recognizable. Uh, now we got to take out all the screws, um, and then in this case, I, I start to take out the screws, and then I realize, oh, 
I don't have to gut this because I have access because I took out that bubble. So now I have my fishing weights. I like to add these lead sinkers just to give it a little bit of weight and that's always great for the actors. Um, it really helps. So because I have access to the inside here without taking out the screws, I just find um, places to tuck away these weights. And then once I kind of figure out where these should go, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue these in here. So, you know, it's just, you're eyeballing it, you're feeling it, you're just saying, all right, that feels about right. And then here, as you see, I have a tendency to over glue. <laughs> Way too much hot glue there, but it's fine. So now I'm gonna take the styrene plastic and I'm gonna go ahead and cover up this hole from where the, uh, the water reservoir was, right? So um, I'm creating a, a template on the styrene plastic and styrene's great material to use. It's very easy to work with. And what's great about it is when you score it with a knife, you can simply just uh, break it away. So it's it's very um, user-friendly material. So here I'm just cutting out carefully, right? Because you just want to cut once. And um, here I'm breaking it apart. And now I'm going to have, you know, once it's painted, it's going to be plastic on plastic instead of using foam or something where you have different materials. So now I'm going to super glue this in place. Um, when I'm doing these projects, I like to keep the train rolling. So I'll use um, a kicker to accelerate the glue. And that just helps to, to keep your rhythm going, right? Because when, when you're making these things, you are creating, right? So now that I have this glued in place, I can take my uh, nail file, the emery board, and now you're just going to conform it so that it looks like it was supposed to be there, right? You overcut it, now we're blending everything together. So now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, <laughs> the subtext I'm thinking, man, I should have covered those holes on the side first and we'll get to that later. Um, so now I'm prepping these holes for Bondo. Right, so what I do, I've done this before, is I take uh, painter's tape, I put a hole, and when I'm covering these screw holes, I put this just as a safety because I tend to be sloppy with the Bondo, um, and this helps me from getting Bondo everywhere. Um, I've had the experience before where maybe there's a nice um, line built into the piece, and you kind of screw it up by putting some Bondo there. So what this does is just make sure that the Bondo doesn't go everywhere. Um, so, you know, take the time to do that. And this is one of those things that's tedious, but in the end, you know, you, you save time. It's front loading. So now I take the Bondo and I'm putting the hardener and foreshadowing, not enough hardener. <laughs> I usually get it right this time I put too little and what's gonna happen is um, I've gotten away with not having this as a problem for a long time so I was due so what's gonna happen is it's even if you leave it overnight it's not gonna completely harden and it gets kind of grainy and mealy so um, my future self is looking at this saying "Uh oh you didn't do that right so but it ends up being a good thing. So now I go back and I take off the tape and as I'm taking off the tape, I wanted to leave this in here because there's always, um, you know, these experiences help and the Bondo starts coming out and I'm like, you know what? I need to fix that side. I kind of jumped the gun on that. This Bondo's not working. Let's put on the brakes. And even during the build, um, Here's live from the build. Okay, so I changed the plans. I wanted to share this with you because, you know, sometimes things go wrong. The, the initial idea was to do a really uh, fine black finish with a little bit of analyze, uh, anodized elements and um, didn't do the graphite treatment. But it's been hot, the paint was sticky, I let it set overnight and it's still the masking you know, was a little funky. So that's not really gonna work. And then, you know, I was trying to fix it and you get in the moment and then I even dropped it on the ground, right? So you gotta go with the flow. So now changing gears, it's it's fine. But now instead of the pristine thing, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to try something different. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the graphite over everything, but because the finish is a little funky, I'm gonna see what happens um, when we weather on top of that graphite. I mean, the weathering will be fine. I'll be happy with that, but maybe the graphite will give it a little added something and we'll use this as an opportunity. But anyway, just wanted to chime in because you know, you gotta remain fluid. Sometimes these things don't work out the way you expected. And in the case of this, where I'm just creating something um, from nothing to have, who knows what it's for, it's fine. If it was for a specific purpose and it had to be <laughs> pristine, then we would go back to the drawing board. But for this, you know, we're just gonna roll with it and who knows all right so back to the build 
And yes, we are back. Thank you, past self. Okay, so now um, what I'm doing is I'm gonna have to remove this, but now I have it fitted because I sanded it, so that was a good thing. And I'm just uh, putting these score marks so that when I go to put it back on, it'll conform to that um, that sanding that I already did to make it a perfect fit, right? So I just pop this off. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my styrene plastic and I'm going to make uh, side pieces that are gonna fill up that gap. And then this um, end piece that we already made is gonna cap it and then um, it'll make it look like it was supposed to be that way. So in order to do this, I've done this before on the channel, you make a template with some painter's tape. It's a good way to get uh, an exact template for weird uh, shapes and sizes. So I just take a marker and I map out um, the this, this side here, and now I know it's gonna fit exactly to that. I take that tape, I make a template. Again, these tedious steps actually end up saving you time because you know, if you're just eyeballing it, you might have to do it two or three times. Whereas this, you front load the work and then now uh, we can make perfect pieces that are just gonna fit in there. Again, double check before I go and cut it out of the plastic and that's gonna work. So now I just easily cut this out of the styrene with my blade, it's just gonna snap right out. <laughs> Such a satisfying uh, thing to do. All right, so now I just heat this up with my heat gun just because there's that bend in there and this styrene is very workable when you put some heat on it. And I'm looking at that, thinking about it, thinking, yeah, that's gonna work. All right, so I glue that in. Again, uh, with, the, with the super glue, with the craft glue, CA glue, I'm gonna spray it with the kicker. Boom, instant bond, and then we get to move on. Uh, I really enjoy that process. And then there you see I put the cap on it, and now that looks much better. And that's what I should have did in the first place. But you learn. So now I'm rebonding the holes. <laughs> the right amount of kicker in this time. Um, I always tend to put too much kicker and it goes fast. So in the last um, time I did this, I tried to do it a little less and I paid for it. So I think it's always better to overdo it. And here I just globbed it on there. So here I got a smudgy lens, <laughs> sorry about that. But what I'm doing is now, because I have all that Bondo on there, you just take a, a, a big file and you just take off the majority of it. Then once I get it down to a workable place, then I take my sanding sticks and I just fine sand it down to where it's just filling in that hole. Sorry for the hazy lens there. Um, it's got a little schmutz on there. And now I'm gonna take some sandpaper and again, just working down that Bondo. Um, because I put the wrong amount of Bondo on last time, so I kind of overdid it this time. But again, you know, I wanted to do warts and all on this one just because, you know, it's doable. We're all human live and learn all right but now it's starting to come together so now i'm going to the finer grit sandpaper this is the 220 and now i'm starting to prep for paint so now we are back on track <laughs> all right so now we got the 220 on there and we're just sanding this down um you know it's a constant process at a certain point you're like okay i guess that's that's enough and now i'm gonna hit this with the primer and the primer is sort of going to let us know where our final problem areas are and then here's some uh air drying spot putty uh, you get that at an automotive shop and here we're just going to fill in all the final little grooves and little pop marks where maybe the bondo didn't fill completely or um, maybe there's like a scratch and this is for light filling you can't do big holes with this because this stuff air dries and once it's air dried it's going to sand off pretty easily and you sand off the majority of it so it's just going to fill up scratches and little pock marks so now i have my fine grit sandpaper and sanding always sanding <laughs> <laughs> and more sanding and sanding checking it out with your finger make sure it's smooth and yeah so now uh, right when you think you're done it's like oh I got to get in there and sand that spot and it's just more sanding right so that looks good so now we're getting there so now I'm going to put the the final finish primer on there and then once that dries, I'm gonna put the gloss black on there, which is gonna be our base coat, right? So there it is with the gloss black. <laughs> now it's looking like something. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm going to mask off the area that I wanna do the anodized look on. So 
before you do the anodized uh, spray paint, you have to put like a silver uh, base because that um, anodized paint is translucent, right? So uh, I am gonna put it over the black, which is a neat effect, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So now again, you know, like the sanding, tape and mask, and you always front load this stuff because in the end, you'll be glad you took the time. So now that the details are done, then you can just go ahead and take some butcher paper or craft paper or just something just to, to you know, cover up the rest of the piece. I have this, um, this is parchment paper that I like to use. And so now we're getting ready to do uh, sort of the chrome part that is going to prep it for the anodized paint. And this, I'm just using a metallic paint. And there it is, drying. The sun is probably the best <laughs> friend when you're spray painting and you want to have things moving along. Um, it's not as fun to do this in the winter time, in the fall. Uh, the summer always seems to move along quicker. So now here I'm uh, taking off the tape. And again, this project, you know, it, it's just fought me the whole time. So now you can see there's like some tape residue even after I let that dry overnight. So now I'm, you know, I'm readjusting my plan. This is going to be more of a sort of weathered piece than a pristine piece. And there you see where it has the anodized over the black. I really like that. It ties the whole thing together yet it looks unique. So now since I'm um, rethinking my plan, so now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and some black paint and that centerpiece, um, you know, I don't know what it would be, probably like the, um, I guess that's where the projectile goes through. Um, I'm going to add some black throughout this. And again, you know, because we're doing this in a, in a fluid way, it keeps it open. This is actually looking better because I'm going to break this up with the flat black. Uh, I, I find areas where I'm going to put it and then it just makes the piece more interesting looking than if I had it all just like sort of one clean tone. I just tend to to uh, gravitate towards things that are, are a little damaged, but that's what's cool about them, right? So now I have that prepped with the Mod Podge and we're just gonna hit this with some just basic black acrylic. I've had it with the spray paint and the masking at this point. I'm just gonna use a brush. You know, I'm, I'm a leaf on the water. I'm just going with the flow, right? So again, but it's like, it's not compromise. I'm like, now I'm like digging this. I'm like, yeah, like, so you have that really candy color anodized. Then it's like this, the body is this sort of off candy color with the black. And then now I have the black, uh, the flat black running through the center of it. So I'm really liking this. So now what I'm gonna do is to give that flat black a little bit of life, a little bit of character, we're gonna dry brush that with some silver, right? So I'm just gonna take some craft metallic paint, a really, really dry brush and a, and a light touch, and that's just gonna give that a metallic look now, right? So the piece is evolving now, now it's starting to come together. It all makes sense, you know, and you joke like, oh yeah, I plan to do it this way. <laughs> All right, so that's looking like something. And you can see the difference there why you want to do that dry brush, right? It's subtle, but it's important, right? So that looks good. Now I'm going to seal that all in with a clear coat. And we're going to um, do the graphite treatment now. So this is originally what I wanted to do. So this is like an opportunity to test it out. Usually I do the graphite for like a pristine, beautiful finish. Now I'm going to see what happens if I just Put it over the whole thing, you know, almost, you know, like a like a secondary clear coat, but with the graphite. And I really like what this does to the piece. You see how it gives it that like metallic shine? And it sort of dampens and unifies the, the whole piece. And I'm, I'm really liking this. Now, pro tip, <laughs> you should wear rubber gloves when you're doing this. But I got into it and I was like, oh, dang. So yeah, graphite, it's, it's, it's a big pencil everywhere. So make sure to keep the area clean or things are gonna have graphite on them that you don't want graphite on. So now I'm just getting rid of the excess graphite so it doesn't get everywhere. And yeah, you can just see, even though I'm just like cleaning that up, it catches the light differently, right? Shapes, silhouettes, colors, and it's really something special now. So here I'm just giving it a final polish. And you see that? 
yeah, that's just really cool. I'm a big fan of the graphite. So now because I use the graphite, I'm going to weather it with the, the water-based oil paint, right? This takes longer to dry, but this is a better option than when I do the acrylic wash over everything because I still want to maintain um, some of that shine, some of that interesting sort of look that I achieved with the graphite. So I'm just using some uh, water-based oil paint and just, you know, more of the burnt sienna, just putting it in crevices. And, you know, I've said this before, like the more haphazard, the better. And yeah, whew, it came together. <laughs> so now I just do a little more weathering. And um, the one thing too, to keep in mind when doing this is, is happy accidents. You don't wanna be systematic about it, right? You wanna put it here. Maybe you're about to put it down and you stop yourself and put it a little bit to the right. And now I just wanna seal this all in with a clear coat. And here's the beauty shots. Really like the way the light catches that. It's very subtle, but the graphite has a lot to do with that. And you know, here it is. I'm, I'm very uh, happy that, uh, you know, I went down the road with this and kind of went with the flow instead of trying to force it into something else. <laughs> that came out really good, right? I think it's really important to talk about that whole sort of staying on course right so this is not what i intended to do but this came out really good and sometimes i find that exciting right so it's you have a roadmap, you have a destination you have an idea you have something you're aiming for and if it goes off track at least you you had a a, a destination in mind so you still are not you know <laughs> way out on the outskirts of whatever your original idea was and then sometimes it's, it's exciting because it ends up being better than your original idea which i find often is the case right as long as you're well intended focused then you can start to color outside the lines a little bit right so that came out really cool. And I'm really liking this thing that I stumbled on where, you know, I do the, the base coat for the anodized, right? A metallic look, but then I paint over the black, the whole thing. And then I have this interesting color, right? So it's not quite black on the black area. So yeah, really happy with that, right? So um, the one thing that did excite me about this was this little sort of pronged um, barrel, right? So, I wonder how it shoots. <laughs> Only thing to do now is to fire it up. <laughs> I haven't shot anything in the new shop yet. I think maybe that way. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, one more, one more. <laughs> Let's try over there. <laughs> oh, I needed to do that. <laughs> well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I do love to read the comments. And be sure to check out the merch shop. We got these hats, I got t-shirts. Um, when you purchase something there, that really helps me to keep this channel going. Well, as always, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>